Now they need to start popping off. Like, you need to get good games here. You know what? I'm actually going to say no, Max. The reason why I'm going to say no okay. is because there's only 10 points dividing third and ninth. Only 10 points. So you got Navi in third right now, Reject in ninth. 10 points divide those two teams. So, you know, I would argue that nobody necessarily needs to pop off. Will it obviously massively benefit them in the standings? No. But outside of, of, of what we've seen, I'd love to see maybe a, a chicken dinner from DRS. I'd love to see a chicken dinner from Yala, to be fair. But I don't think any of these teams need to pop off. Even A1 and, and, and I8, they're 78 and 76 points, respectfully. They're not even that far away from, from the likes of Reject and, and Navi. It's, it's, it's very, very much possible. They just have to get the job done. I agree. I, I think they need to start ramping things up a little bit. Though, uh, to answer my own question, I, I'm... I want to see Fnatic Zombies get himself a top three. Okay. Uh, so far, in the entirety of this event, I believe they've only got one top three. Uh, and that was actually on... What map was it already? I, feel, I think it was Rango, actually. So it, I want to see them try and make another one happen because currently they're in 14th. Uh, with, uh, well, before last game, they were in 14th with 50 points and went for that to update. But I, I want to see Fnatic Zombies keep on going. They started to play a lot more aggressive, and I think that is exactly what they needed. But it still needs to go even further. As I say, uh, they need to go medal to the pedal. Apparently, that, that is a Maxman yeah, 2021. Uh, qu quote it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they do indeed have to go, man. I, I dare you to get that tattooed on you, man. I Please. I'm not getting a tattoo. tattoo. Why not? Because, like, what, is, imagine you, what, man, do you think scary. I would tattoo, I don't know, like something like, imagine I get tattooed a piece of watermelon. Like, come on, cringe, man. Oh, oh, oh I see what you did there. Yeah, because because honestly, you know, you're not worthy of having a watermelon tattooed on you. You'd have a stupid We're not going back, man. Nah, nah. We're not starting this. Or... Hey, you started it. So you started it. Yeah, yeah. And I'll start now. What do you think this is? PMWL? This is PMWI <laughs> Imperial. This is a completely different event, okay? We have changed for the better. No more bad jokes. <laughs> well, sometimes, but not too often. Uh, <laughs> we'll try our best. Uh, uh, drops have changed, though. Fnatic um, Fnat Zombies not going to be going into Novo this time. Only team that's going to be on Sunnafka Island is I8. So should be a relatively easy rotation for them. Otherwise, there are teams that have had to change their drop a little bit. And I do believe DS Gaming were not able to reach Zaki, so they are in the exact same position of Navi right now. But they're barely landed. Like, yeah. they're, they're still in the air. They're, they're, they're still like Phil Collins. <laughs> They're still, <laughs> they're still calling in the air tonight. Like that's, the, that's how long they're 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 they're, they're uh, holding out to start looting, which is gonna hurt them when it comes to moving into the circle of phase one. The phase one circle was pretty good. It, it it's a bit to the east, but for the most part, you have a lot of that mainland in play. Potato Hill. You've got kind of a, a hill that's a, a ahead of farm. You have also. Uh, outside of Yasnaya, Pollyanna, the Alamo area, which could be very strong to take over. And then you have obviously the kind of hill in the compound where around kind of Navi and Valdis went in the first Arango game of the day. It's it's open for the taking across the board. I eight should have an easier job rotating into the circle. I'm wondering if they're gonna go West Bridge or East Bridge, because I think both bridges are viable for I8. At this early stage of the game, I would say Eastern Bridge is less occupied because it's only BTR that's there right now. So it would make more sense for them to go in that direction. It's only BTR. It's just, just, just BDI. <laughs> but uh, they are not a team that gay keeps the Eastern Bridge, right? Despite dropping in farm and they play there all the time, they're not a team that, oh, we're going to defend the bridge. They don't really care uh, for bridge camps too much, so that'll be fine. But we touched upon this uh, game one. Yala, they drop, they change their drop. Uh, normally they would drop very spread around shelter, prison, mansion, and, and most of the time they would um, have an interaction with Zeus. Zeus did change back to a Southern Judge. They, they were yep. a little bit back and forth. I, I think this is a change for the better for Yala, very clearly, because they knew that it was not working. I think they could have made that change even earlier, personally. I think day two, they should have started applying that change. They took a little bit slow, but it doesn't matter how, uh, at what point you start doing it, as long as they make it happen now and it works out for them. I'm happy, Chappy. So, really good change from the Saudi Arabian team that has been really stepping up. I, I believe Blair said on the desk that they're one of the top teams in terms of kills, which is the case right now. And they are definitely 
living up to the expectations I think a lot of people have for them because this is one of the first times they're playing at this level and uh, even though a little bit of a hard start uh, at the kickoff of the event, they're actually looking very comfortable in this lobby, like they've already done this before. Yeah, he, honestly, I have so much, so much love to give. Yeah, he, he, also even as an organi organization, they've been a pleasure to talk to in the past. I, I know Kevin, known him for, New best friends? for quite a while. Um, okay. <laughs> that, that's like such a jealous ex-girlfriend response right there. I'm a tsundere, okay? I'm, like, a you know. I'm like in your favorite anime you can see. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, god like, does Imperium, how dare you? No. <laughs> I'm actually, I love it, like, you pull it off beautifully. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy to see them perform in, in this tournament for sure. As A1, they're out for blood. They find oh. BTR and the kryptonite of BTR strikes once again, glowing brightly. It's not green, it's purple this time. It's A1 and they represent the Bangladesh. Oh my lord! I think he's dead. <laughs> I, I think it's fine. <laughs> The Kryptonite, what is this, PMGC, man? We're going back to 2020 right now. Going down memory lane, but A1 still getting himself the kill. They, they know, right, the BTR are going for a little bit of a better big spread, right? And if yep. they want to pick themselves one kill, this is a rotation that could work out. Though that rotation, in my eyes, doesn't make a huge amount of sense because you're putting yourself in between the river and the rest of BTR. I think that they came into this fight with a plan. They said, we want to ruin BTR. We don't know, we do not um, want to catch up. That might be something because when you're looking at the circle, I don't think this makes a, a, a huge, huge amount of sense. I, I disagree. I think it makes great <laughs> sense because unlike other games where they maybe got, I wouldn't say got caught up, but maybe got put under a little bit of pressure from teams coming in from the West. Yeah, maybe that coastal line position is a little bit too committed to the coastal line, but at least in terms of avoiding the teams on the west, I agree with the rotation now onto the coastal line because it feels like they're still able to get a lot of information towards reject. So it's only phase one, don't forget. So by getting a kill onto BTR, they've automatically pushed BTR way far out um, ahead of them. So they have more space around them. They have more levels of, of information around them. And it seems like they are playing this game with a lot of purpose, A1. This is one of the moments where I wish I was inside the movie Inside Out by Pixar, where I could just really know what's stop. going on inside their head and, and know what the overall play was. Because there's many options, and, and we do not know, right? We're just speculating on this one as to what the game plan was for them. Uh, but regardless, it got himself a kill, so it works. That's all we can really say. Uh, teams have now started pulling off their own rotations. DS Gaming taking a little bit slow, though I'm liking it. Blacklist International rotating a little bit faster than what we saw in game one. They're already up to the eastern side of Rosshock. They might have a little bit of back and forth with, for example, Valdus. Spot. It's a, it's a good spot right now. There's a got plateau. In terms of scouting and looking inside the circle, coming in from the north, I think that's one of the best spots uh, Blacklist International could have really took for themselves. It's a beautiful spread. It's a fantastic spread for this phase one because you have a couple on the open hill up above. You have a one in one compound and then you have two in another compound. It's it's a real great stranglehold and it takes a lot away from another team pushing close, even though it's only phase one. So Valdes have gone further down south into a more central uh, phase one position. Nasser are still in apartments, but they've joined back up as a full squad ready to react to this phase two, which I'm totally okay with. Zeus may be rotating a little bit too slowly where they could come into a little bit of contact with Navi and DRS disengaging away from Yasnaya pretty nicely as phase two pops up north. Yep, there you go. Now, you talked about Alamo being really powerful to play around. Now, yes, the value sir. of that position, like the free real estate is, bo is booming right now. You've got to invest in that compound right now. Uh, buy it if you can, put a mortgage down. You should be happy about that investment. Valdus is going to be one of the first teams ready on the move. That is what Valdus does. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. They're going to continuously try and aim at being the most central they possibly can be in any circle that comes their way. Other than that, other teams are going to try and do something relatively similar, and that is going to be exactly what Yellow is doing. Already left Gatka, and already ahead of the, for example, Geek fam that drops in a very similar Ooh. position. Yala are starting playing very aggressive, and playing center is there to reward their aggressiveness. This is a beautiful spot they're holding on to as well, because it's just down the hill of Potato Hill, but you get a lot of information up that hill area, and then you're able to look down on towards the rest of uh, Potato Hill downhill area towards uh, Valdis and Nassar, so really good play from Yala. Very surprised to see Ayan have gone across the Western Bridge. 
But they uh, should it be okay. Maybe it's more comfortable for them, and that's okay. While DRS are looking to punish Fnatic Zombie Salam for encroaching anywhere near the space held onto by DRS. I'm so surprised to see so many M249s still. I, I think that's something I'm never going to be used to. Everyone just rocking the M249. Yeah. Going to try and give the yeah. roll over. See you later, Salam. We'll send you back to the lobby. Play a few TDMs while you wait. Next map is going to be on Miramar for you, so you better get prepared. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm liking SDRS. We said maybe not the most aggressive team. I think they showed some really good moments of greatness in terms of how they take fights last time versus Geek Fam on Sandhawk. And I want to see more of that. I want to see the controlling DRS where if you try and contest their position, they will come at you and they will try and smite you down. Uh, that is what I want to see from DRS. They started doing it more and more. I'm hoping that this is going to be something they're going to lean into uh, even more in the near future. That's, that's a spot of trouble for DS Gaming as Satan goes down. Tixie finds that one. Lovely spread by Navi. They're still in the blue uh, phase two, but I think they're okay with that. It's kind of how Navi are comfortable playing this game, sticking to the edge, playing with confidence, and even grabbing a couple of early kills will be good for them. Kitsune, um, the IGL will be able to, to play. It's one tree. I didn't want to touch. I didn't want to touch. I didn't want to touch. <laughs> Talk about it because I'm trying to give him a compliment, but yes, indeed, that was one tree that he hit. You <laughs> <laughs> like me and Imperium when we're driving in the game, man. Jeez. That's fine, he'll make it out. <laughs> That's me driving in real life, for God's sake, you know? I, I, so I don't have I, a I'm car scared of going to Ireland man. now, man. I, <laughs> I don't know how to feel so about that one. I don't have a car at the moment, it's fine. Imperium, oh, I'll come pick you up. Uh, no, no thanks, I'll, I'll walk. There's two hours now, that's nah, fine. I, I'll, worry about it. I, I'd make sure you'd have a level three helmet so you'd be fine. I'll need a level three vest too, man. I need everything. I need, I need the med kits. <laughs> I need. I need to survive. <laughs> True battle royale in real life. I know. Oh, with Imperium. Ah. I guess gaming though. <laughs> they're, they're welcome. Gears gaming trying to go for their wide rotation up north. It's relatively slow as we expect from Gears gaming by now. But otherwise, everyone's pretty central. I'm not expecting too much to change. If the circle goes towards yes. no, yes, no, feels now that's gonna be a hilarious game. Did you notice that rotation from Reject? Oh, yeah. Brain rotation. They were they were on that coastal line position, like outside the farm. They wrapped around the south of yes. A1, all the way around, and they are on the east side of the map. Fantastic rotation. As I getting caught out because they opted to go for that western bridge instead of the eastern bridge. Ooh, that circle. I'm getting heated up. I'm getting pumped up right now. That's what I'm talking about. And I'm also going to be talking about this fight between I and Navi as. I8, a little bit of a tricky one. Really spread, but that's also a somewhat similar situation for Na'Vi. Not blind on top of each another, but do you want to take this fight when it's still known to the blue? No Na'Vi and how they played Sanhok. If they did the same strat, they're just going to take as many kills as they can and leave, which seems like that is exactly what they're going to do. Cross the bridge, and later on, you can try and gatekeep I8 if they try and cross the river later on down the line. Navi are just now full sending across the bridge and towards the edge of Yasnaya. By the way, did you see the PMW yesterday? They have two games back to back it. with two yeah. CD fin Sorry, the PMW West. Oh, West. <laughs> the, the, the back to back. Sorry, okay. I meant to West. Apologies. They have two okay. games two back-to-back -back city finishes, and one of them was a Yasnaya finish in Arangal. It was wild. So I kind of hope we get the same again. I was a little bit jealous watching it, as much as I was loving it. Dave and Inverum did a fantastic job. But man, I, I want to witness it. I want to be a part of a city finish, and Yasnaya bring it to us in this game three. Yeah, they're, they're pretty rare. I, I think the PMPL Western Europe, when we were covering it with the entire crew here, we, we had very little amounts of city finishes. I mean, the, the odds are definitely not in favor of those actually happening, but some teams are already trying to set themselves up in this eventuality where that will come to become a reality. Navi are going to be there. DRS is also going to be in a position right down south. But the quest, the thing is, and this is something that you and Kalar say a lot in Pyram, so I'm going to quote you on that. Do not go center. Go on the yeah. outskirts of Yasnaya. Only commit to the center of the city if the circle ends on top of it. Xavier is in the compound that's in the field. BTR in the divots that's by the field, but it, it's a pretty big divot, so you know you're able to avoid quite a few grenades. So it's a good spot for them to hold on to. Yala are in the Alamo, which I think is great for them controlling this south. But they will need to think about the fact that as they get into the next circle, they're not going to have much info. Yeah, seems like you're having a hard time breathing. There, you go, man. Okay. I was careful. Imperium there for a second. Hopefully he's fine. Uh, yeah, Yala. Got to make sure they 
get the intel. So they're going to be able to try and push out. NASA also avoiding the fight with I-8. So they're just going to go for the big wide rotate up north. Might be a little bit of a back and forth with the Valdis, but then of course what's going to happen. It shouldn't really result in too much happening just yet. But yeah, a lot of teams are committing Ryan TS9. They're more focused on the northern edge of that compound. Well, that's it, should I even say. Not the compound. That's way too big for a compound. Has Rejig hey, also got a widespread. There you go, you're good. I, I was like, yeah, like yeah, I, mean, geez, I was man. about to message you. <laughs> I was really gone, like, I was a little bit worried for a sec, but it's good. Yeah, I know the rotation of Reject is too good. Oh, there you go. I know there you, you go. There you go. I had a hard time breathing because you knew. You knew it was going to be as an Apollyana potential finish. And it is. Right on top of it, your wish becomes reality, Imperium. Here we go. And look, I'm okay now with teams full sending into this here. I think it's it's such a it, it's such a strong Yeah, now I finished that it makes sense. But in the meantime, on the outskirts, you have Zeus taking the fight against Myth. A couple of good clean shots and knocks have been laid out. Leaves Myth with just a couple of players left. Yep, BTR also, we saw in the kill feed, taking a few casualties, so not going to be starting off too well. Believe versus DRS, as the Trento just quickly but surely pushed himself inside the compound of Yaznaya. Now some new nades, some utility, what a nade onto Faroki. And that's also Rio getting picked up. Broly, though, I, I say, I love the guy, clutch master for myth, but you are talking about taking a 1v4 versus Zeus, and I think that by default, even though I'm not too good at math, uh, the odds are definitely not in your favour. They're looking for the Vinyl player. They think there's still one player in the building currently. Broly trying to remain completely undetected, but I think it's just a question of time where this game of hide and seek truly ends. Valdis in the kill feed also taking a couple of shots onto Fnatic Zombies, and I8 went for like a really deep central of the Aznaya position and kind of got caught out. Oh, nice pixel one. Can you confirm the kill? Kill the Take the kill instantly. That's what you want. Nice to get to confirm. I'm going to go for the heal off just yet. Does have a first aid, but now the information has been granted over. Zeus. Gonna try and molly it up. Broly just barely escaping the wrath of those flames. They did get himself the first aid. Also got himself, I believe, a few extra meds, so he's gonna be able to heal up extra of boss and 5%. And he's gonna be actually pushing it out. Almost gets it done with this one play a little bit further away for Zeus, and he will be able to get himself the kill. That's an extra four kills in favor of Zeus, so really good execution on their side. Hopefully, we're gonna be seeing a bang of a game, and not like game one where it gets a zero. This is looking like a good start for the boys on Zeus. Navi with a wide to do split in the city. Geek Fam are kind of in between them. BTR go out. Yal are inside the center part of the city. DRS are on towards that kind of southeastern edge. Reject are on the eastern edge. Yeah, Valdez up on towards the northeast. I really love DS Gaming's position that's on the kind of tadpole spot of the river because they overlook a lot of Yasnaya getting information without really getting in the mix of all the action in this phase four. This is going to be a heck of a game. I just cannot wait to see how teams are going to respond to this one. Zeus has already had Godless actually into the field, so he's going to be moving over there. This could still not be a safe finish, by the way. There's a chance where it could go to the west, the north or the south, and it does not end in the city. And if that's the case, you're going to see one of the most epic unravelings of a city finish I've seen. It's Teams are going to struggle to move out, and only a few will really be able to remain up and ready to go. But yeah, it was all depending on where Phase 5 goes. If it goes onto the city, teams are going to commit to it. If it doesn't, things are going to start getting very, very dicey for a lot of these squads. At the end of the day, this is the calm before the storm, Max, right? Yep. All of these teams are just hoping and praying that the circle in some way favors them. If you're in the center of the city, you're hoping that it shifts and centralizes towards the city. And at the end of the day, all hell is going to break loose. If it shifts over towards Reject, they're going to be laughing, but they're going to have five, six, seven teams heading in their direction. That's why I love DS Gaming's position, because they're out of the firing line while still getting information on that set firing line as the circle shifts oh, down south. No. And they've been jubated to all high hell. There is still the southern part of Yasnaya, but that is all field outside of it. And this is taking me down memory lane. This, this reminds me of the clutch play from Jonathan, if you remember back in PMW. Yes, I do. Exact circle. Exact circle, man. Well, it might be something similar from Zeus. We'll have to wait and see. Good. Oh, teams are going to have to commit. And you said it. It was the calm before the storm. Now you need to weather the storm. That is what we're going to be hoping to see from all of these teams. Teams have to yet cross over the road. It's going to be I-8. DS Gaming going to have to do similar. But same for Valdis, A1, NASA, and even Blacklist International. But DS Gaming already committed in. They moved inside the compound. But crossing that road is not going to be easy. But it's it seems like teams like Yala and Geekfam are not focused on the road. They're focused more on the teams down south of their location, which is a little bit unusual from what I was expecting in this. Man, uh, this is crazy inside the city. You have 
six, seven teams just hoping and praying that they don't get caught out, trying to utilize as many of the windows as they can to keep themselves protected and get as much information. You have A1 just full sending on towards the northern edge of the circle, while I8, two, three players up left, just use them down, so Crypto Blade and Johnny, hopefully you're gonna be able to spot out A1. Are you trying to stop down A1, A1 currently? Valdis and NASA and Blacklist International, they're just wrapping around and same for Reject, they just want nothing to do. And I understand the so who would want to get involved in the Yasna Poliana fight up north? Nobody, unfortunately, but teams are committed there already will have to bite the bullets and deal with the repercussions of such rotation and such a spot in the first place. Nade still, Nade back and forth, the mollies, what a shot from Frankie, by the way. It's a sinister A1 thing in. How are we going to execute this one? Because this is some of the hardest rotations to pull in the entire game in competitive. And uh, if you want to make it work out, not only must you have great synergy and also great gunplay, you must have an insane amount of utility to just even cross that road in the first place. It's good rotation from Valdis. It's low-key worked out for the most part. Reject as a full team weren't really there to protect that area, and that's allowed them to be taken out. Valdis have the field in their control. Blacklist are getting picked apart one by one and down. They go in the ashes of the field of Yasnaya in 12th spot. Yep, see you later, Alligator. Blacklist International out in 12th. 11 teams still remain, and uh, which is pretty much expected when you have so many compounds for, and buildings to play from. But Johnny with the M249 gets GE out of the game. And we'll try and confirm it as Lamborghini from behind. Behind that window, waiting to maybe use his team as a bait. Does actually strike at the opportune time, but Johnny will still be able to make it out with just a few HP remaining, and he still has a first date, so it is not over for you, my friend. But Xavier are slowly but surely wrapping around, but not striking oh, just no. yet. They're taking Beautiful. it pretty slow. What a nade onto Johnny. He's got to move out, but he doesn't have the time to do so. No time to respond. And that's going to be Rabbis going in and confirming that kill as Xavier. It was looking pretty tricky, but they back up as a three-man. They have a chance to go pretty far. Really good from the Xavier. The really the circle, good rolling side of the circle as it does shift over <laughs> towards the northeast. Exactly the same finish as we had in towards the PMWL, which we saw the solo win come out from Jonathan of TSM back in the day. But this is a different time. And you said, could Zeus, put, Zeus pull it off? It could be the case, because I think Godless is the last player standing. Yeah, different time, different generation. Before it was Naruto in PMWL, now it's Naruto Shippuden in PMWI. We just changed the absolute game. Everything changes. A1 made over to the wall. We say it many times and you'll be on those walls. One nade and you're done so, but seem like the utility has already been traded effectively and heavily by a lot of these teams. But this is a big spread from Navi, and I would say right now it might be just best for you to regroup back in one singular building because you know that four teams, four four-man squads are going to knock on your door and tear it down instantly. <laughs> knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door, whether it's a nade, whether it's a gun, whether it's just a full squad bodying through these buildings. Valis just in through the fields are trying to drive their Tessas through, but I don't know how many is going to survive. That's one down, two down, Gooey left on his own. Uh, unfortunately for Valdez, they tried to make that rotate work out. They tried to avoid the fight, but unfortunately that came to bite them later on down the line. End of Valdez as they get eliminated in ninth now. 18 remain and all hell has broken loose in Pyram, as you said earlier. All the teams are now struggling. Zeus was actually able to make it outside of the fields of Yasnaya, inside the compound itself. Wow. But everyone's getting on top of each other. There's also such a verticality. You have to keep in mind that teams will try and just occupy as a three or even a four-man squad inside of these buildings, inside of these apartments. It's just so hard to play with. Yala got some great control, but Navi did exactly what I, I know. said to him. I love yeah. that. They regrouped in that compound, in that one building. Same for Geek Fam. I'm loving how those two teams are currently playing, and now they're hoping to have the circle come their way as NASA, unfortunately, bite the bullet and get taken out in eighth. The Xavier have had such a great game so, so far. So good. Four kills up of the full squad. They've been on the outside of the circle, but they've made this so confidently inside these buildings. I, I just cannot cannot fault it at all. A1 are going to be their next challenge to the north on the outside of the wall. Nades are being fired up by Tixi, being aware that DRS is close by on the other side of the wall. They're being covered for the time being. Yeah, DRS, got to be careful while you're playing this one. Prone to utility damage. Boom. And take gets an up by Rabbis of Geek Xavier. Yeah, but we said it right. Those walls are just... Devil Edge Sword, if teams know you're there, you're done. And that's exactly what happened to Dante. Darth Dante might get put back up on his two feet by 6-9 if he does get a little bit closer. If 6-9 gets up, he could be prone taking some headshots against himself and instantly going down. 
Xavi is still taking full control of that one building. Now you have four teams. Yala, Xavier, Geekfam, and Na'Vi. They are looking so confident, but the circle over to Na'Vi right on top of their building. Now the waiting game for Na'Vi starts. You just got to make sure no teams make it nowhere near close of your building. Well, can they deal with all of the pressure that's going to be dealt upon hey, them? Or can they just survive? Because all the other teams are probably going to take each other out on the incoming area of the circle. Yala has three players up. Godless from Zeus, just hoping that nobody spots him. The two players from A1 oh. snaking across the wall. The Xavier, they know that they're there. Hey, then, no, they see the smokes coming on the right side. They're trying to pre-fire. Dante is going to be instantly taking a really big beating. Oh, the 6 is still there to keep the hope alive for the Bangladesh team of A1. Another play comes on out, but that's going to be it for A1. There are a lot of kills over to Deke Xavier. They are absolutely shredding the competition on this game. Up to already six kills, but they're looking for more. They are hungry for blood, and they want sustenance on this game. Yeah, that has a player knocked out. Geek Fam also going to be another team that's going to be looking to rack up the kills already on six, as we are getting a Yasnaya finish oh, inside the buildings. Hey either side of the road. Na'Vi already up to 2.3k damage and they are looking to increase that a huge, huge amount. They want the 3k point. Oh no! So get the no Rapids comes from behind and he ruins everything for Na'Vi. You must be kidding me. How are you all in one position? You're going to get denied that game so quickly. Meku is trying to keep the hope alive for the Russian team. Trying to drop on down. The Xavi is to have Lamborghini but he's nowhere to be seen currently. The Molly comes on through. Rabbis have to go to another building but Na'Vi are getting picked up. Matic and Tigzi could still be brought back into this game. But it was looking so good but Everything went wrong at the snap of a finger. Oh no, oh no, he's going for the revive. It could work out. Great play by Meku, by the way. He actually jumped out the window of a higher floor and went down in the bottom. But Rabbit's oh. is there. Oh, he's trying to pre-fire it, and he gets put down. What a play from Meku. Able to potentially get his two teammates back on their feet if they can make it happen. This is still Na'Vi's game to win. 11 kills and looking to get so much more. But Lamborghini is not going to try and go for the kill. He's going for the raise as Zeus do get taken out in fourth. Only three teams remain, and Geek Fam saw all of this unfold under in front of their very eyes. And they're going to be third party in this fight the moment all hell breaks loose. Meku's actually gone on the outside of the building, so is Tixi. What they could do is they could allow uh, wait they, for nice. Geek Fam take down the Xavier, and then Navi could pick apart Geek Fam. Ah, a double win for Navi today would be huge. We'll see if they can bring it home. Geek Fam, gotta be careful. You only got now a few seconds, 10 seconds left. You're gonna have to jump on over. They got, oh, okay, they got a lot of smokes. I do not feel they, okay. <laughs> Snoop Dogg would be really happy about that one. Gonna still have to jump on over. Hopefully not gonna be stood out by Lamborghini. He's gonna be on playing on the more higher ground position. As Navi actually puts himself out of the building itself. They're actually towards yeah. the, the, oh, the walls inside. I, I love that play actually. It's so good. They're leaving Dick Xavier fight versus Geek Fan. They're just gonna exactly. be picking up the pieces after. Exactly. They're just waiting. They're holding out. They're thinking one step ahead love of their it. opponents. That spread as well, covering all angles. They have it covered, but can they deal? with the remaining five players around them, looking for the third-person perspective, being aware that QB is close by. Could all go wrong for any of these teams right now. Whichever team takes the fight first, could have all the shots coming their way, all the utility coming their way. QB, I think he knows maybe someone's peeking around the side. That's a great nade if he can just connect. Get some big damage onto Meku. Oh, Meku just barely escaped with his life. <laughs> we'll have another first day. That's his last first day. You have no second chance now, Meku. You have to make this count. Or you still have the chance of doing so. Oh my the god. The circle's ending right on top of it. It's gonna end in We're gonna go right to the last phase. And it's so rare for that to happen. One more one nade from Meku. Yes. See the whole of Geek Fam go out. But the nades in return are putting Meku under pressure. He still have two or three bandages, so Meku can kill a little bit more, get himself back to 75% health. And now there's this verticality that you have to take into account. He gets information about that third-person perspective. He heard Dan Root down below. He's going to jump. Oh, a little bit hard, actually. I think they heard him. Yeah, they hear the footsteps. They're going to try and hide inside. He could get a double. They they're so well aligned. Oh, look at him! Look at him! Oh, he's going to jump on over. There you go. The off-hand boy is just so sneaky. And unfortunately, does not work out. They weren't prepared. And that is going to be Lamborghini down. Rabbi still up and ready to go for the Xavier. But he's just remaining undetected. As now Na'Vi see this as an opportunity to strike. They still want play up top. They, they do not seem aware of. QB's gonna bite the bullet. Takes the insulin against off the first knock. Meku is there to back it up. And now they're down to one player onto the side of both D Xavier and also for Geek Fam. As that's it, Geek Fam eliminated in third. What a stellar performance regardless of what happened in this game. But now there's only one player 
Can the man make it happen once again? Can we see Lamborghini clutch it out after that heal off like we saw yesterday? Now they have their footsteps and once again that verticality is going to be taken into account. There's one guy want to drop down and try and pin them down. That's a shot. Rabbis gets it done. There's another play. Got to be careful. But Lamborghini is still up and keeping the hopes alive for Dick Xavier. One bullet gets it again. It's down to a 1v1 Imperial between Tixie and Lamborghini. Two clutch masters in their own regard in their respective region. But only one will come out on top. Tixie has five first aids. Lamborghini only has one. Lamborghini knows he has to go for the push. Trying to pre-fire though. Tixie's got to be careful. Not easy to take that fight from down below. Oh no. Can he go for the rest? Try... No way. 10 seconds to go for the res. Should be just enough time. Tixie's got himself a great weapon with a barrel too. Perfect weapon in the clutch to take a 1v2. This is intense. Don't get the info. Jumps on down. Sees. Has the information onto Tixie. Tixie trying to heal off two points of bandage. Actually, a first aid. That's all. That's all you're going to get. 75% HP. Take it or leave it. And that's going to be GG.